32 degrees in the car and tomorrow it's supposed to reach 38. Yes, 38 in places. But a Sunderland about to agree a deal this week, hopefully, for the signing of Nathan Broadhead to come back to the Stadium of Light. Here we go, back again with another video. In today's video, I'm out on the hottest day of the year so far for a run. Can you run in this heat? Of course you can. Keep well hydrated, keep in the shade, and we'll see what happens. But yes, Sunderland have beaten Dundee United at the weekend, and we move on to Bradford away tomorrow night. One of the best garden centres around in Durham is the Poplar Tree Garden Centre down here in sunny Shincliffe. Yes, I will be doing a live stream tomorrow night. So join in at about half past six. Well, unfortunately, I haven't been able to stay in the shade. But we'll head off. There's a little seat here down the river Weir. And there's some sort of... Oh, what's in the, what's in the river down here? Let's have a look. Well, there's a swan. There's a swan. Swan. We do have the swan and three signets in Durham. And we do have a swan here in this lovely part. Tell you what, it's roasting. It's absolutely roasting. And a bay there, we have a swan. And some fish. Just seen a fish. Swan going upstream. I've got all the fish in there. If you can see all them kicking about in there. Stay away from him just in case he's a bit angry. But yeah, I'll see loads of them. Look at all Watch, ready, ready. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hopefully going to try and do a four mile run. In this heat, I am sweating like Billy O. Sweating like Billy O. I think I've come to a kind of bit of a dead end here. Like, this is a lovely little part of the woods down here in Shincliffe. Heading up towards over Bow Burn and yonder. But yes, the lads have had a really good training session today, a really good training session, a really good hard workout. And that's what Alex Neil is trying to do. He's trying to get the lads to have a good training session and then have a match the day after. So they're playing with heavy legs. They are, they'll be playing with heavy legs tomorrow. But the players like Elliot Embleton, probably Jack Clark, they will probably be starting tomorrow. And I would have thought players who started, some players who started on Saturday will be getting a rest. Oh, fuck. Getting a rest. Oh. On Tuesday night. Well, where the hell am I? So, apparently players like Winchester, even Diaku. Oh. <clears throat> I've had a really good. Oh, found our way back to the off the beaten, oh, back under the beaten trail. <sighs> oh, Jesus! I am <sighs> a little bit out of breath. To be honest, is that warm? Is that close? Is that humid? Imagine training in that heat today, sun and players. You know, it would take a lot out of the players. They've had a really hard session today. A lot out of the players. Hopefully, not too much. And, you know, they're going to play with heavy legs tomorrow. But, you know, that's going to get them fitter, fitter and fitter. But the idea is not to go too much over the top so you don't break down before the season starts. But you want to have heavy legs. You want to have a really hard workout. Plenty of those with games against lesser opposition. Hopefully still winning, but getting the lads a lot fitter. You know, players like Bailey Wright, players like Ross Stewart will need the game time, will need the sessions, the workouts, and they'll come good. And the final third, apparently, calling to Alex Neil, the final third of the game, you know, against Dundee, the final third was lacking slightly. We weren't as sharp. That'll come as the season almost begins. That'll come as the season almost begins. I am absolutely overheating, overheating. But, you know, I will go for a run on a, on a day in the 30s. It's a different kind of heat to when I was in Greece. 
different height of heat altogether. It feels hotter here, but not as close, which is strange. Time to hit some hill, some steps, a bit of a workout. Oh, that's it, head back to the studio, we're mad, but we'll see how this hill goes first. Five, six, seven, eight, my boot scooting baby It's driving me crazy, my obsession for my western My dance floor days, my rodeo <laughs> Steps, obviously Right, we're getting up <clears throat> To the top in a minute Happy days Not that bad to be honest Still a long way to go though oh. Just like my video, some people would say these steps go on and on. I'll take the flatter route, I think. Oh, oh God. Five, six, seven, eight. Oh. Oh. oh, God. Oh. Oh. Fuck me. Pardon me, French. That is one hill that hit hard. And there was something in the woods, something making one hell of a racket in the woods. Somebody's either walking about making a daft video or there's some sort of badger, deer or something running around them woods. But I tell you what, might have been lies or tigers or bears, but I've run a bit fast to get out of there. Right, I'm going to hand you over now to the studio with the madman himself while I recover a little bit. I've still got two and a half miles to go in this heat. Hopefully we'll make it home. Right over to you, mad. Cheers, Terry. Thank you. Thank you for that. I'll be thinking about you, bud. Hope he gets back safe and sound. He's looking a bit tired there. He sounded a bit tired, didn't he? Very hot out there. 33 degrees. So yes, let's chat about Nathan Broadhead. There was rumours left, right and centre going on about Nathan Broadhead. Everton, there's a bit of, bit of news in the Sunday Echo as well. Nathan Broadhead, the Everton future, as Sunderland continue to track the striker. Continue to track Nathan Broadhead. Do you want Nathan Broadhead at the stadium alike? Do you think Nathan Broadhead will make it in the championship? Do you think he's capable of making it in the championship? And most importantly, do you think he'll stay fit if he, if he arrives back at the stadium alike? Sunderland's target, Nathan Broadhead, didn't feature in Everton's pre-season friendly against Arsenal last week, despite the Toffees boss, Frank Lampard, using 22 players. Broadhead has travelled with Everton on their pre-season tour of the USA, but wasn't even named in a matchday squad to face the Gunners at the M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore. I think Everton did lose that game 2 and nil. Some Everton players did pick up injuries ahead of the match, yet Broadhead wasn't even specified as one of them. Sunderland remain interested in re-signing the forward who scored 13 goals and 27 appearances while known at Sunderland Stadium of Light. Brilliant, that isn't it? It's a brilliant record, that. We'll take a few moments out of this brilliant, wonderful, fantastic video <laughs> to please, can you not go and buy a Bud Light, but subscribe to the channel. It'll be much appreciated. We're almost really getting close to 14,500 subscribers and I couldn't do it without you. I couldn't. I couldn't. I'd be sitting there talking to myself and I'd end up in a straight jacket. So I couldn't do it without you. So please subscribe to the channel. It'll be much appreciated. Let's get back to whatever I was saying. One complication is that Broadhead only has one year left on his contract at Everton, meaning there will have to be little point in, in meaning there would be little point in loaning him out until next summer. Everton also are also short of striker options, following the sale of Richard Arlison to Tottenham, and the thoughts that Lampard will look closer at Broadhead this summer. But there is news creeping out, news creeping out here, there and everywhere, that both clubs, both clubs are close to agreeing a deal. Both clubs are close, both clubs want it to happen and both clubs are close to agreeing a deal. So will this happen this week? Now I think 
I'm about 90% certain. I am going to put me neck out there on the chopping block. About 95% certain that we will get Nathan Broadhead within seven days. Now, uh, uh, I, uh, well, okay, we'll, we'll stretch it to 10 maybe. But yes, we're going to get Nathan. I feel confident we're going to get Nathan Broadhead. And team news tomorrow. Now, I've had a good long. A long, hard think about this. I've looked the way that, that Alex Neal puts out his sides. And especially when they're close together. You know, we had Wednesday at, in Portugal. Then Saturday, Dundee United. But then again, straight away, we got Bradford. And we got hard training sessions. And we got really hot sun. And he likes to rotate the squad. He'll want to keep his team, the main team, that likes to stew it. Pritchard and we got the likes of Evans and, and, and other players who I think he'll keep Dan Neal for the weekend against Accurate and Stanley so I think there'll be a complete change tomorrow and the fringe and squad players will play against a lesser side like Bradford without being too disrespectful because Bradford you know a decent side and I wish them all the best this season but I think we'll be able to play a lesser team I mean we see a lesser team I think this team here picked up plucked out of the plucked out of this out of the clouds so Patterson in goal now I think we're going to change it to 5-3-2 we keep on swapping and changing the 4-2-3-1 to the 3-5-2 so Winchester missed out Bart missed out and AG came on AG, AGI came on for the second half, or last sort of bit of the game against Dundee United. So he is frit, fit, frit. He is fit, fresh, and raring to go. So he'll manage to start very easily on, on Tuesday night. We're going to go three centre backs. He's going to rest, going to rest Ballard for the weekend. We don't want to get injuries. Hard training session today. We're going to rest also Bailey Wright, who's had a good rest since Australian encounters, who come on and played 60 minutes. Now, I don't think he's, I don't think it'd be any, I don't think it'd be wise to play Bailey Wright tomorrow night. I think he'll rest those two. Serkin could do, definitely could do with the rest. And Hume, great game. Hume scoring a wonderful bullet header. He'll have a rest as well. So we'll have Gooch as a wing back because he never played at the weekend. We'll have Taylor. Young Taylor's supposed to be improving we'll see how he does tomorrow night when he starts then in the middle Embleton got a good rest didn't play he, he's going to start tomorrow Matete rested or oh, nine rested three players coming in then Diamond who did come on and Clark who, who who played the full 90 minutes in Portugal will get another start tomorrow probably another full 90 minutes tomorrow after resting on Saturday so that's just a wild stab in the dark Wild stab in the dark for me, and probably I better be careful because I keep going for those runs out there. But Terry better be careful going for those runs out there in the woods. He might get a wild stab in the dark, you just don't know, do you? But there you go. What do you think? What's your thoughts on that team? You know, I think it's a bit of a mismatched team. I think it's okay to play against Bradford. And I think it's good that we rest Stewart, you know, we rest Stewart. And we re Maybe bring Stewart on the last 20 minutes, a bit of a run out. You could do that with one or two players tomorrow. So for me, that's my team. And I do think, you know, again, I'm going to put my head on the chop chopping block. I'm going to say Nathan Broadhead will be in a Sunderland shirt by the start of the season. And we do need players in. We do need another striker. Maybe it's Troy Parrott as well. And also a goalkeeper, a, a right back and another really good midfielder. So there we go. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Take care. God bless me. God go with you. And I should have said this ages ago. Please subscribe to the channel. No, we rewind back. Are you right there? Have I said it already? Did I say it already? I might have already said it already. I can't remember now. Heat stroke. Right, take care. We'll see you tomorrow for a live stream for Bradford versus Sunderland down at that Bradford Stadium, which I've completely forgot. See you later.